Twilight paced anxiously outside the throne room. She could hear Luna and Nyx talking from the other side of the door, but could not make out what was being said. No matter how intently Twilight listened, all the words sounded just muffled. She even tried putting her ear right up against the door, but it didn't help. Celestia had whispered just before shutting the door that it would only take a few minutes. Well, it had been a few minutes, and Twilight's presence was wearing thin. What was Luna going to do to Nyx? She needed to know. She was so wrapped up in her own thoughts that she barely noticed the seams of the door begin to glow, which spawned greater concerns in her mind. What was going on? Was Luna passing her judgment? What could she be doing that would be producing so much light? All these questions danced within Twilight's mind, and most instantly her thoughts flew to the worst-case scenario. They were banishing her. Luna was banishing Nyx to the moon for another thousand years. And that had to be what was happening. Twilight was sure of it, and she quickly began, bucking and beating on the door, trying to get in. She needed to convince the princesses that banishing Nyx to the moon wasn't the answer. If they locked her up in a dungeon or banished her from Equestria, Twilight could at least visit her or be with her to comfort her. But the moon? She couldn't go to the moon. In her panic, Twilight called upon her magic and tried to teleport herself in the throne room, only to feel her spell falter. Some pony was stopping her, interfering with her magic. Twilight could only guess it was Celestia. The princess was probably standing right on the other side of the door, making sure she couldn't get inside. With her magic blocked, Twilight resumed bucking at the door. She screamed at the top of her lungs to be let in. She assaulted the door, yet it held strong against her hooves and her voice. Still, Twilight didn't relent. She fought for what felt like an eternity, stopped only when she saw the light coming through the cracks of the door grow dark. Her blood ran cold. She dropped to her flanks and sat there, staring up at the door as she had been able to get through. She had failed. She'd failed Nyx again. She'd let Luna take her daughter away and hadn't been able to do anything to stop it. Why hadn't she insisted on staying in the room? Why had she let Celestia lead her outside? She should have been there. Stayed there with Nyx. Why did she trust Celestia? Why hadn't she? Twilight jumped when the throne room doors opened and Celestia poked her head out. Twilight, we're... Like some pony had stuck a match and thrown it into a tinderbox, Twilight's anger exploded. Her mane was consumed with fire, and her coat glowed gentle white hot. Her rage shifted, screaming so loud that her voice echoed throughout the halls of the castle, causing any pony to hear her to stop dead in their tracks and listen. You banished her! After all she's done, you banished her! Twilight bellowed. She began grabbing at anything she could, ripping chunks of stone directly out of the wall and hurling them at Celestia. Twilight, Celestia said firmly as she employed her own magic to catch the volley of stones. Why didn't you at least let me say goodbye? Twilight, that's why you didn't want me in the room. You didn't want me to stop you. She didn't deserve this. She didn't deserve to. Celestia furrowed her eyebrows and spread her wings and horn glowed. It glued to a blinding intensity. Celestia then threw her own magic out, the energies washing over Twilight like a tidal wave. Twilight's own magic was overwhelmed, and her anger was doused like a fire hosing water. Twilight, we did not banish her to the moon, Celestia said as she was finally able to get a word in. You, you, you didn't? Twilight asked, her voice changing from an indignant scream to a disbelieving whisper. No, we didn't. But the light, and you were taking so long. What were you and Luna doing if you weren't banishing her? So she let a smile blossom onto her face as she slipped back through the throne room doors. Come and see for yourself. Twilight followed Celestia into the throne room, and the moment she was inside, she began to look around frantically. She wasn't sure what she was supposed to see, but she searched for Nyx. Her gaze, however, fell on a quickly another figure. At the far end of the room stood Princess Luna, but she had undergone a transformation. She had grown as tall and slender as Celestia. Her own star field of a mane has also transformed. Nightmare Moon's mane could be described as a dark night with faintly twinkling stars. Luna's old mane was a clear summer's night. Her new mane, however, was the night sky at its finest. Billions of stars, nebula, and other wonders that were normally only visible through a telescope could be glimpsed within her mane. It was a living tapestry. All in all, Luna truly looked like a ruler of Equestria and Regan to the moon, a true equal to Celestia in both power and stature and beauty. Twilight couldn't tear her eyes away for several seconds. She was dumbfounded at the first time she'd met Celestia in person. 
When she was finally able to look away, her gaze turned downward, where she noticed a black mass on the floor just in front of Luna. It was a little black filly with a unicorn horn, pegasus wings, purple hair, and a few lingering bandages lying lazily across her flank. N-Nix? Twilight said breathlessly. Her mind struggling to grasp what she was seeing. It was at that moment that Twilight felt a gentle nudge on her side. Looking back, she saw the nudge had come from Celestia. The princess nodded gently, finally assuring Twilight that what she'd seen was real. That single gesture was all Twilight needed. She raced across the room, dropped to her knees beside Nyx. The rejuvenated alicorn had passed out on the floor, but Twilight had held her all the same. She embraced and nuzzled Nyx. As Twilight hugged Nyx, Celestia and Luna moved closer, standing side by side. They watched the scene before they silently shared gentle smiles. Careful, Celestia said. I think it'd be wise to let her rest. Twilight was brought back to reality by Celestia's words. She loosened her grip on Nyx, but didn't let go. But, but I thought, how could she? My sister and I, as well as Nyx, are different from normal ponies, Twilight. And not because we both have wings and horns. Luna replied. We are also different in the way we are very closely bound to magic we wield. Not only does our immortality and strength come from our magic, so does our maturity. That was why, after I was saved by the Elements of Harmony, I was so much smaller and younger than Celestia. The Elements of Harmony took away much of my capability of magic, and thus I became a pony barely mature enough to be considered a young adult. So what did you do? Twilight asked. I took back what was mine. Luna answered with kindness, rather than cruelty. The power Nyx possessed was never her own. Nexus's spell gave her the portions of my power that remained in the shreds of the supplemented, while I was missing by drawing in raw energy from Equestria itself. I took most of the magic for my own, since it was mine to begin with, and dispelled what remained, leaving Nyx the way she was before the cult pony napped her. I also, Luna continued, her gaze shifting to the passed out filly, took back the memories that never should have been hers, the memories of being trapped in the moon and everything that preceded it, when she and I were one and the same. Well, uh, she will remember the facts about our shared past, but she will no longer know the torment of spending a millennium in banishment. To put it swiftly, Twilight, I took back what was mine, and mine alone. Will she remember things that's happened other than that? Twilight asked. Yes. Nyx must live with the decisions she's made for herself. She possesses every memory from the moment she took her first breath as her own pony until now. After all, it was the events of these last few weeks that helped her discover the kind of mare she wanted to be. She'll also retain the key memories of the day from the summer sun celebration two years ago, mostly because of how closely the memories were intertwined with her memories of her school play in the following evening. But otherwise, Nyx is as she once was. With her magic drained, her physical maturity has regressed. This has also affected her mind. Much like her body, it is once again youthful and innocent. It's the mind of a child. But I thought you were going to punish her, or banish her to the moon, or... Nyx has worked to undo the mistakes she's made, Luna interrupted, maintaining her gentle tone while still silencing Twilight. That is a sign, a pony, that deserves a chance to redeem herself, not one that is to be punished. But what about the rest of Equestria? They know Nyx is Nightmare Moon. If they see her... Do not doubt that Nyx will have to face those she's hurt, Luna explained as her voice took on a warning tone. There are those across Equestria, even in Ponyville, who would strongly disagree with what I've done. But that is something Nyx must face, the consequence of her actions. What if somebody tries to hurt her? Twilight asked nervously. She, like us, Twilight, even as a filly, is much more durable than most ponies. However, if any pony gives you much trouble, I'm just simply a letter away, Celestia assured calmly. And for the moment, let me and my sister worry about what Equestria thinks. Luna added. If there are any ponies that do not agree with what has been done, they can come and voice their concerns to me. It was, however, my decision to make, and I stand by my belief that this is for the best. So you're going to let her go, just like that? Twilight asked, finding the situation almost too good to be true. No, Luna said firmly, her lips bending down into a frown. There is one other part of the punishment, and it involves you, Twilight Sparkle. Twilight winced and held Nyx tightly against her chest as she dreaded what the now much larger Princess Luna was going to do. Twilight Sparkle, I hereby place Nyx in your care. You shall be her legal guardian, 
and it will be your responsibility to ensure that she never again repeats her crimes. You shall watch her as she grows up. I want you to ensure she laughs, learns, lives, and has friends. I ask that you help her enjoy the childhood that was almost lost to her, and make sure she becomes the mayor she wants to be. Luna let her voice slip into a more pleasant tone, and smiled mischievously. Think you can do that? It took a moment for Twilight to process the order she'd been given, but the moment her brain connected the dots, she nodded her head furiously. She proceeded to hold and nuzzle Nyx, while her face remained locked in a huge smile. Tears rolled down Twilight's cheeks, and she made no effort to stop them. She was too happy to care. It was then Celestia leaned in close to Luna and whispered quietly, Spike! Twilight! Nyx called out, slowly descending the stairs of the library's main floor. It had been a few days since the princess's return. A few days of fun for Nyx as she got back into the normal routine that Spike, Twilight, Pee-wee, and now Alicia's had. It hadn't been all peaceful. A few ponies had come to the library to argue with Twilight that Nyx had to be locked up or even taken away. Twilight, however, proceeded to chew them out and slam the library door in those ponies' faces. And afterwards, she always reassured Nyx that she didn't deserve any of the punishments that they were demanding. It had been okay until three ponies came at once, with every intention to take Nyx by force and lock her up until they could convince Celestia she needed banishment. It had been a tense evening. With her magic and Spike's help, Twilight had chased those three ponies off. Then, to make Nyx feel better, Twilight broke her usual rule and read two bedtime stories before bed. Nyx had been so excited that she made herself stay up for both stories, which resulted in her sleeping in. It was almost ten in the morning, and while Nyx wasn't surprised to see Twilight and Spike weren't in bed, she was surprised to find they weren't in the kitchen, or the library's main room. Where is every pony? Nyx asked herself, after checking most of the library. For a brief moment, a flicker of fear sparked inside Nyx, as her mind was more youthful. She couldn't stop herself from wondering if she had been abandoned again, but she dispelled the thought through a firm shake of her head. She knew Twilight wouldn't just leave her like that. Not now, not ever. That still left Nyx wondering where every pony was, and she began to search the library. It was then that she was in the library's basement that the rapping of a hoof on wood reached her ears. Some pony was knocking on the front door, and for a moment Nyx wasn't sure whether she should or should not answer it. The ponies at the door could have easily been some ponies from town that wanted to take her away. Another hoof, Nyx realized that the pony at the door could be Twilight or one of her friends, so she decided to at least see who it was. Nyx galloped to the door and reached out with her magic to open it. She, however, couldn't help but fumble with a handle for a few moments. Her magic was much weaker, and she was still getting used to it. It was even weaker than it had been when Twilight first found her for some reason. Still, with some effort, Nyx got the door unlatched and pulled it open with a hoof. There you are! Nyx jumped back with a small eep, escaping her throat as she retreated in the library. The party pony of Ponyville, Pinkie Pie, had been standing right on the library doorstop, reaching and uh, catching Nyx off guard. Yet, even after startling her, Pinkie Pie quickly zipped inside and got right up beside Nyx, giving her a playful nuggie. I was so worried about you going and to s going to sleep through the party, but Twilight said I couldn't wake you up until it was eleven. I thought it was kind of sad, but since you've missed so much of the fun already, I heard some pony moved around. So, I guessed you were awake. I decided to knock on the door, and I was right. Now you can come to the party earlier and have so much more fun. I bet if we really try hard, we can make up the hour you were being sleepy, Miss Sleepyhead. Pinkie Pie, stop it. Nyx half giggled, half winced, and escaped Pinkie Pie's relentless and playful noogie, and stumbled back a few steps from her. What's going on? What party? Oh my, thank you for saving Ponyville from a bunch of scary monsters party. Hey, can you guess who the guest of honor is? Twilight. No. Pinkie Pie replied with a sing-songy voice. Rainbow Dash? Pinkie Pie giggled. No. Applejack? Not even close. Fluttershy? Wow, you really need to practice at guessing games. It's you, you silly filly. Me? Well, duh. Yeah, Applejack and Rainbow Dash and Twilight and Fluttershy helped. But you were the mayor that really saved the day. You went and broke yourself into all those clones, and then you went flying around helping ponies like an army of superheroes. You brought lightning down and the big crack. And you bucked some of the kapows. And threw some of the monsters back into the forest. It was totally amazing. A smile slipped onto Nyx's face. You really think so? Yep, now come on. Every pony knows is over at Sugar Cube Corner. 
Man, they're going to be so excited to see you. Well, it's actually more like every pony, you know. I know every pony in Ponyville and Sugar Cube Corner is really hard to fit into. That and a lot of ponies I know are being meanie, meanie, meanie heads. Some actually heard about the party and came to tell me I shouldn't be throwing it. They said that you didn't deserve a party. How mean is that? Anyway, Pinkie Pie continued. All of my friends and all of your friends are there. And there are some other ponies too. Now, come on. Pinkie Pie chirped. Before Nix could react, Pinkie Pie had slipped a hoof under her belly. It was all it took. It was a single swift upward motion of Pinkie's hoof. And Nix found herself being popped onto the air. She yelped, waved her limbs, and fluttered her wings as she toppled it through the air. Nix landed on Pinkie Pie's back, and before she could get her bearings, Pinkie Pie reared energetically. A moment later, Pinkie charged through the streets of Ponyville while Nix held on for dear life. We're here! Pinkie Pie sang as she burst through the doors to Sugar Hoop Corner, startling a number of ponies around the room with her sudden arrival. After barely dodging a few ponies unfortunate enough to be in her path, Pinkie Pie skidded to a stop in the center of the room. A slightly shell-shocked Nyx held tightly onto her back. When Nyx dared to open her eyes, her vision was melted with Sugar Cube Corner, decked out in party decorations, complete with streamers, banners, and balloons. Nyx could even see a cake, which had been decorated with a simple but recognizable rendition of a grown-up version of herself standing over a defeated Lupus Major, which had X's over its eyes, and his tongue sticking out comically. More importantly, Nyx saw the friendly, smiling faces of ponies, something she had sorely missed during her time spent as Nightmare Moon. There weren't a whole lot of them, the room was maybe halfway full, but there was still more than Nyx had expected. Twilight and her friends, Cheerly, Sweetie Belle's parents, Scootaloo's parents, and a few other mares and stallions from the community were all in attendance. There were even a few faces Nyx didn't recognize, and even those ponies seemed happy to see her. It wasn't just the adult ponies, though. Before Nyx could really recover from being whisked through Ponyville by Pinkie Pie, she found herself at the bottom of a pony pile. Apple Bloom, Scootaloo, Sweetie Belle, and Twist had jumped up, cleared Pinkie Pie's back, and tackled their friend in a fit of laughter and giggles. I guess Twilight was telling the truth. You are back to normal. Apple Bloom cheered as she pulled herself out of a pile of ponies. The others quickly getting back to their hooves as well. Must be weird not being all grown up anymore, Scootaloo noted. But it's good to have you back, Nix. Thank you. Really good to be back. I miss you all so much, Nix said with a smile, though it was a grin that quickly withered into a frown as she hung her head. Listen, I'm sorry I locked you all up in the dungeons. I didn't really want to, but Spellnix had convinced me that. We know, Apple Bloom reassured while she placed a hoof on Nix's shoulders. It was scary, but Twilight told us why you locked us up. I'm really sorry, girls, I promise. I didn't want to do it. Sweetie Belle was the next to come up beside Nyx. She was wearing a comforting smile. It's okay. We've all forgiven you. Yeah, it's totally... Hey! Scootaloo zipped over to Nyx's side and pointed a hoof on her hips. Since when do you have that? Have what? Twist asked, tilting her head quizzically to the right side. Nyx has her cutie mark. Avalum chirped with a bounce before she, Twist, and Sweetie Belle moved over to Scootaloo to inspect the new mark. What is it, a shovel? No, it doesn't have a handle. I say it's an arrowhead, Sweetabelle argued. It's not shaped like an arrowhead. Maybe it's, uh, uh... Scootaloo began, only to be cut off. It's a shield, Nick said with a proud smile, just by the quizzical look from her friends. A shield? What kind of special talent do you have that gives you a shield for a cutie mark? Well, I says my special talent is protecting other ponies, even when I have to put myself in harm's way. Look how I protected Ponyville during the attack. Scootaloo nodded her head. That's pretty cool. Not as cool as Rainbow Dash's cutie mark. It's still cool. But can I still be a crusader, right? Nix asked. Of course, Sweetie Belle chirped. After you made Twist a cutie mark crusader, we've started a new membership policy. Ponies who already have a cutie mark are allowed to be members as long as they help members who don't have a cutie mark discover their special talents. They'll have to work pretty hard to keep up with Twist. She's been helping us out a whole bunch. Ah, oh, I just bring snacks, Twist admitted while rubbing the back of her neck. But the snacks you bring are great, and you also help us find more things to try out for our special talents, Apple Bloom pointed out. Hey, Scootle began, maybe one of our cutie marks are like Nix's. Maybe we should try defending other ponies. But what can we defend ponies against? Sweetie Belle asked. Nix felt a bit of unease riding up in her chest. She did not want her friends to go around 
running in the Everfree Forest, tr trying to feed monsters she had chased away. It was then, however, that she noticed a hydra-shaped piñata hanging from a hook on the ceiling. A sly smile formed on her face, and she pointed in the direction of the piñata. You know, the big hydra looks pretty mean and scary. We wouldn't want her hurting any ponies here at the party. It is pretty big and nasty, Scootaloo agreed, rubbing her chin. The other four fillies soon caught on to Nix's idea, and with large smiles, the five friends shouted out in unison, scaring half the ponies at the party. Cutie my Crusader Piñata Monster Slayers, yay! The Crusaders, now numbering five energetic fillies, ran off to find a blindfold and stick so they could crack open the piñata, or rather, to defend the innocent party-goers from the papier-mâché monster. Well, sister, it seems the most of Canterlot is taking your transformation well. Celestia commented as she and Luna strode beside the royal castle, having a short respite between meetings and announcements. It had been very hectic for the sisters, trying to balance work, what needed to be done, and the number of public appearances they had to make. They take it as a sign of Nightmare Moon's defeat, and that I conquered the great monster and reclaimed my power. It may not be the proper truth, but I see no point in correcting them. An honorable move, sister, but I fear that the proper truth will come out in time. Some ponies from Ponyville have already sent letters to me about the fact that Twilight isn't punishing Nick, says they think she should. Shining Armor has been surprisingly vocal, and a letter from one filthy Rish complained about the fact that his daughter, Diamond Tiara, was invited to a party for Nix. A party? Luna echoed quizzically. From the invitation I received personally, it was a thank you for saving Ponyville from a bunch of scary monsters party. Thrown by Pinkie Pie. If memory serves me right, the party is going on right now. A small chuckle escaped Luna's lips as she thought back to her own encounters with Pinkie Pie. She doesn't know how to throw grand parties. I hope Nix enjoys it. Speaking of Nix, I must admit, I was curious about something. I feel you made the best decision for Nix and Twilight, thinking back, your powers and memories, but... You want to know how I did it? Luna interrupted. Celestia nodded her head. Yes, it isn't a spell I'm familiar with. A smile slid from Luna's face as she chose to focus on the corridor ahead. It was a spell created out of dark, jealousy, and ill intentions. My plan to try and keep the moon in the sky began before I properly became Nightmare Moon. I knew that I wouldn't be able to resist you in the sun for long, considering back then you were my elder and superior in terms of age and power. So I studied and developed a spell that allowed me to steal magic. Flowers, trees, ponies. I stole not only their magical power, but if I came across a pony with a unique knowledge of magic, I would steal that as well. I used the spell to build up my power, Luna admitted, with hints of disgrace in her words. When I had enough knowledge and magic gathered, I used it to transform into Nightmare Moon. I infused myself with the power and became a mare that could easily stand against the pony you were a thousand years ago. It is a horrible and dark art. Celestia shifted, gently nudging against Luna as the pair continued to walk down the hall. Do not worry yourself, sister. All that is in the past, and you found a way to take that spell and put it to good use. I'm glad you agree. I didn't want Nyx to have to live with her mistakes I made. I wanted to take it all back from her, and that desire made me think of that spell for the first time in centuries. I'd almost forgotten it completely. It hadn't crossed my mind since I became Nightmare Moon. Perhaps that is why Nyx does not know the spell. It is a small miracle that she only knows the things I thought about when she and I were one and the same. Still, once I did remember the spell, I knew it was the best thing we could do for her. It was the best outcome we could have hoped for, I believe. Celestia agreed. Many in Equestria may still fear and despise Nyx for what she had done, but as long as there are those who see the good in her, I'm sure she will be able to find her way. That, and didn't you mention that to Twilight we've put a couple royal guards under cover in Ponyville, to make sure that Nyx doesn't get attacked by an angry mob, Luna added knowingly. Such a precaution, nothing more. Don't worry, sister, your secret is safe with me, Luna assured as the pair reached their destination. It was the castle dining hall, which was already filled to the brim with ponies. The occasion was another celebratory meal, hosted this time by the elite of Manhattan, who were more than eager to welcome back the royal sisters. Celestia and Luna took their seats at the head of the table. The mayor of Manhattan, along with a few of the city's biggest business ponies, had the privilege of sitting next to the royal sisters. And after the princesses offered some welcoming words, lunch was served. The business ponies around Celestia and Luna were soon lost in a discussion about the economic impact of Nightmare Moon's short-lived reign. 
It was a conversation that the princesses only half listened to. Luna eagerly digging into her food after the long morning with Celestia picked and nibbled at her meal. I was wrong, sister, aren't you hungry? Luna whispered quietly before putting a forkful of food into her mouth. I am starving, but I already ate too much at breakfast. Celestia whispered back, not wanting to draw the attention of your ponies. After what we've already eaten today, I honestly shouldn't be eating anything more than a green salad. Otherwise, I'll have to skip dinner. Luna laughed to herself. I still say you worry too much about your weight, Celestia. You may be able to eat whatever you want, but, as you may recall, I've always had a little more conscious of my figure. Celestia snipped before she glanced to her side. A servant came up beside her. He whispered something into her ear and then retreated as quickly as he had approached. What's wrong? Luna asked. Pausing with a fork in her mouth. It's spell, Nixus, Celestia whispered. He's broken into the castle dungeons. Broken in? He's distraught because he played a role in Nightmare Moon's resurrection, even though it is my understanding that he and all the children of the Nightmare were being influenced by parasitic magic. So he broke into the dungeon to reprimand himself? Celestia nodded, taking her napkin and gently cleaning her mouth. Yes. Spell Nexus has always been a little overdramatic. You should have seen him this one time when he was still my student. He accidentally broke a vase in the castle and was sure I needed to banish him from the kingdom. He can be such a drama queen at times. Don't you mean king? No, queen. Celestia corrected with a small grin. Don't tell anybody else, but he has a very high-pitched scream. Luna chuckled a little at the thought. I'll take your word for it, sister. Still, what are you going to do? I'm going to leave you to entertain our guests for a while, while I go convince Spell Nexus he does not need to be imprisoned himself in the dungeon. Celestia answered as she stood from her seat. That, and if I know him as well as I do, I'll also need to convince him that he doesn't have to resign from his position as headmaster of my school. Do you want me to save you a piece of dessert? It's supposed to be cloud cake, your favorite. Celestia winced, coming to a stop just a few steps away from her. After a few tense moments, she cast a glance back at Luna. Save me one small piece. A small piece, Luna. Luna nodded, watching as Celestia left before returning to her meal. Then, when a servant drew close, Luna waved the mare over, leaned in, and whispered quietly as she smiled devilishly. Be sure to save my sister a very large corner piece of cloud cake, with as much frosting as possible. Actually, why don't you just set aside one of the cakes for her? And make sure to deliver it to the bedchamber this evening. Of course, your majesty, the servant replied, quickly scuttling away while Luna placed a fork full of food in her mouth, imagining just how Celestia would react when she found a whole cloud cake in her bedroom. She couldn't help but wonder if her sister would be able to resist eating it. Twilight had a weary smile on her face as she walked back to the library. Spike and Nyx were passed out on the, her back, the all-day party having utterly worn them out. Beside Twilight strode Rarity, who was carrying a dozing Sweetie Belle on her back. I think that Pinkie Pie is tired after today, Rarity said, her own exhaustion apparent in her voice. I, for the first time ever, saw her walking up to her loft instead of bouncing. Twilight laughed and nodded. Yeah, but it was a lot of fun. That it was, Twilight, that it was, Rarity agreed. Still, there is something I want to tell you before I forget. What is it, Rarity? Well, at the beginning of all this, I thought you were crazy taking care of a filly that turned out to be Nightmare Moon. Not just because of Nyx, but because of you as well. I know you've taken care of Spike, but I always assumed you were got help raising him from Celestia. Well, from her and her professors at the school. Exactly. I was worried about what Nyx really was and for your safety but also worried that you didn't realize what you were getting yourself into. Taking care of a filly is a lot of responsibility, and Spike is really more of an assistant since he's capable of taking care of himself. I wanted to say that I've never been happier to prove, be proven wrong. You've done an amazing job taking care of Nyx. I mean, you helped Nightmare Moon change. Not many ponies can boast their parenting skills reformed one of the most feared villains in Equestria. Thanks, Rarity. That means a lot coming from you. Just don't let it go to your head. Rarity warmed. You may have done well for so far, but you can't let your guard down. Trust me. If you don't keep an eye on that little filly, she'll get into trouble faster than you can imagine. I still can't believe Sweetie Belle was able to 
get into my gold silk and make her cr crusader capes without me even noticing. Well, I giggled a little, having heard more than once about the kind of trouble Sweetie Belle could cause for her sister. I'll be sure to keep that in mind. I hope you do, Rarity remarked as the pair reached the intersection of town. Unfortunately, it would seem this is where we part for now. I need to take Sweetie Belle back to my parents' house, so I must bid you adieu, Twilight. Good night, Rarity, Twilight replied with a small chuckle. She watched Rarity take a few steps down the other street before she turned and continued on her way. It only took a few minutes for Twilight to reach the Golden Oaks Library, and after she tucked both Spike and Nyx into bed, she slipped downstairs. She summoned the scroll and ink jar and sat down and began to write by light of the candle on her writing desk. Dear Princess Celestia, I just wanted to thank you and Luna again for letting Nick stay with me. While most of Equestria may not be as welcoming to her, I can assure you that after today's events, Nix has friends among ponies in Ponyville. Ponies who are willing to see her for who she is, not who she was. The one thing that I've learned from raising Nix is that any pony wants to change for the better. They can, especially if they have help from good friends. When I first saw Nix, I was, just like you, afraid she was going to be Nightmare Moon. Even after discovering her at the time, timid personality, I was still afraid of the truth. And I realize now that I was actively denying all evidence that pointed out who she really was, just to alleviate my own fears. And yet, despite all that happened, things didn't turn out as dark as they could have. From what I've heard, even when she was fully resurrected, Nyx didn't act like Nightmare Moon from the Legend of the Books. The time she spent with me as my daughter, the time she spent with her friends, had changed her for the better. And if Nightmare Moon herself can become a better pony, then I think any pony can. Your faithful student, 